Welcome to the webcast for the RadarSat Constellation mission. For today's launch, we will be flying three satellites for our customer, MDA. All three of these satellites are for the Canadian Space Agency to help enhance maritime surveillance, disaster management, and environmental monitoring. To me. Uh, Falcon 9 is our 70-meter, two-stage, liquid-fueled launch vehicle. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage, and that accelerates uh, the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to the edge of space with the help of nine Merlin engines located here at the bottom. Today, we will be attempting to recover this first stage for the second time uh, at our landing zone, Slick 4 East. This booster flew for the first time earlier this year on our Demo 1 mission for NASA. On top of the first stage is the inner stage, uh, which is black, as you would be able to see if we could uh, peer through the fog there. Um, and then on top of the inner stage is the second stage. And uh, the two stages separate about two and a half minutes into flight. And the first stage is the portion of the rocket that we are attempting to recover today. The second stage has a single Merlin vacuum engine, or MVAC, which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the three radar sat satellites to sun-synchronous low Earth orbit at an altitude of 600 kilometers above the Earth's surface. That's roughly the distance from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Sun-synchronous orbit basically means that the satellite will pass over the same section of Earth at the same time each day. Now, those satellites are safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is the pointed cone at the very top of the rocket. Uh, this portion of the rocket helps protect the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. Because our recovery vessels are currently at the Cape, we will not be attempting to recover the fairing halves today, but it is something that we will continue to pursue on future missions. Falcon, I ask you for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. Lift off to Falcon 9. As you just saw, Falcon 9 had an on-time liftoff through the fog from Vandenberg Air Force Base. Approaching max Q. is supersonic. Vehicle is passing through maximum dynamic pressure. We now have three events coming up in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine start one, or SES one. All of these things you can follow along job. with uh, on the timeline at the bottom of your screen. Main engine cutoff coming up soon. This is where all nine engines of F9 will shut down. Trajectory is looking good. And there on your screen, you can see that we have visual confirmation of main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine start one. 
So on the left-hand side of your screen, we'll watch the first stage as it begins its return back to Vandenberg Air Force Base. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the second engine as it begins to carry the three radar sat satellites to sun-synchronous orbit. So boost back burn has begun. There you just saw fairing deployment. It's a pretty cool shot of the fairing flying away. And we have about 10 seconds left in the boost back burn. So the shot you see on your left is from inside the interstage. And boost back. Confirmation of boost back shutdown. So in order for stage the first stage to make its way back to landing zone one at Vandenberg Air Force Base, uh, it has to execute a series of three burns. The first, which you just saw, is what we call the boost back burn, and that helps to slow the rocket down and orient it for entry. Shortly after this, um, the grid fins, which you see right there, uh, articulating as they help steer the rocket back to Vandenberg, uh, those are deployed to help guide the rocket during its descent. Following that, Falcon 9 executes its entry burn, and that slows itself down before hitting the dense part of the atmosphere. the entry burn actually cuts the first stage speed almost in half. So that's what we'll be coming up next at about the T plus six minute mark. The third and final burn that stage one will execute today is the landing burn. Happens to be everybody's favorite burn and that takes place just before touchdown as the booster touches down softly on the ground. So if you happen to be in the greater Vandenberg Air Force Base area, um, I recommend that you head outside because y you are very likely in range to experience the sonic boom that comes with re-entry. So at T plus five minutes now, we have confirmation that MVAC power is good. Trajectory is looking good. Despite the foggy view from this morning, everything is looking good. We are 10 seconds till entry burn. Stage one entry burn has started. Confirmation that stage one entry burn has started. So there on the left-hand side of your screen, you see the first stage as it's making its way back to landing zone one at Vandenberg Air Force Base with the help of the grid fins as it steers. The view on your right is the same operation that we have going on, just from a different camera. So there you can and see that we have confirmation one of stage one down. entry burn shut down. Stage two on the right-hand side there, looking good. Everything is nominal and trajectory is good. Stage one FTS is safe. Slowly but surely you can see the layer of fog reapproaching uh, on the left hand side as we have a view from the top of the first stage rocket looking down the rocket towards the stage engine section. section. You heard the call out for a stage one transonic. Stage one landing burn has started. Landing burn has begun. T 
due to the fog we might lose the video as it touches down but stay tuned. Okay, there you can see. There you can see, again through the fog, but at least a little bit more clearly this time, Falcon 9 has landed at landing zone 1 back at Vandenberg Air Force Base. So with that good news, we turn back into second stage, our primary mission, stage as it continues FTSS to carry the three radar sat constellation satellites to sun synchronous orbit. That's a shot of the MVAC nozzle as it burns Seco. through. And there we had confirmation of second engine cutoff or SECO. So now we're just going to wait for confirmation of second stage good orbit. GNC confirms good first orbit insertion. All right, we have confirmation that we have a good orbit for second stage. Now we're about to enter a 40 minute coast phase, so we're going to take a And back ignition. And back shut down. So there on your screen, you saw confirmation of second engine start two, as well as Seco two, second engine cutoff. Acquisition of signal, Melendi. So the view that you see right now is at the top of the second stage, looking out into two of the three radar sat satellites. And that on the right hand side, of course, is the okay, sun, which is giving us some this. cool solar flares. And there on your screen, you can see visual confirmation of the first of three set, uh, payload deployments. So we are not launching these one, two, three in rapid succession. They are spaced out a little bit by a few minutes each. For today's mission, we have already successfully deployed the first one a couple minutes ago. And we're now awaiting to deploy the second. Payload two deployed. And there on your screen, you can see that we have successfully deployed the second of three of the radar sat satellites. As I mentioned earlier, today's payloads will be delivered to sun synchronous orbit. Sun synchronous orbits travel over the Earth's poles as the planet rotates underneath, and that allows the satellites to pass over a particular section of Earth at the same time each day. So we're coming up on our third and final deployment for this morning's mission. Uh, I am hearing from the team that while we will have telemetry available, we might not have video. So stay tuned on the right hand side of your screen there for able to bring you uh, footage of the final deployment. Oh, and I just heard the call out that all payloads have been deployed. With those three successful deployments, that brings our webcast to a close for today.